Trees are a fundamental part of data structures and algorithms, and understanding them is key to excelling in coding interviews. Let's dive right in. What is a tree in computer science? A tree is defined as an abstract data type used to represent hierarchical relationships between elements. A tree consists of nodes connected by edges, with one node designated as the root. Each node in a tree can have zero or more child nodes, but every node has only one parent node, except for the root node, which has no parent. Let's cover some key terminology regarding trees. So the root, as we've discussed, is the top node of a tree without a parent. A child node is one directly connected to another node when moving away from the parent. A parent is the converse notion of a child. It's a node directly connected to another node when moving towards the root. Siblings are nodes with the same parent. A leaf is defined as a node with no children. The depth of a node refers to the number of edges from the node to the tree's root node, whereas the height of a node is the number of edges on the longest path from the node to a leaf. And now we'll jump into the various types of trees. So there's plenty. While we can spend hours going into each one, let's just get a general overview of what type of trees there are. So general trees can have any number of children. In nodes of binary trees, each node has at most two children. In balanced trees, the differences in the height of subtrees are kept minimal. A tri is used to store a dynamic set where the keys are usually strings. This is great for things like autocomplete. And segment trees and Fenwick trees are used for answering range queries and update queries. Now, trees wouldn't be useful unless we could traverse them and figure out things depending on their nodes. Tree traversal is the process of visiting each node in a tree data structure exactly once in a systematic way. In general trees, the most common traversal methods are BFS and DFS. Both BFS and DFS, which we'll talk about in a bit, are strategies to search or traverse trees and graphs. Imagine you're at the base of a tree. BFS, otherwise known as breadth first search, moves level by level, while DFS, also known as depth first search, goes deep down one branch before backtracking upwards. Again, breadth first search works across the tree level by level. So let's say we have a tree with levels labeled A, B, C, and so on. BFS would visit all nodes on level A, then all on level B, and continue this pattern onwards. So imagine a tree with nodes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. BFS would visit them in this order. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. How does BFS work? We start with the root node in a queue. We pop the first item from the queue and process it, whether we log it or take some kind of action on it. Then we add all children of the process node to the queue for the next step. Then we repeat the steps and pop those items and process them and then add their children to the queue. It sounds simple, right? But how does this look in code? Let's take a look here. DFS, on the other hand, goes deep. It explores as far as possible along one singular branch before backtracking. And unlike BFS, there's actually three ways to do DFS. One way is pre-order traversal, where you visit the root, then left, then right. Then there's in-order traversal, where we visit the leftmost node first, then the root, then rightward. Finally, post-order traversal, you might guess. We start from the leftmost node, then right, then root. The traversal types are named for when the root gets processed. To look at an implementation of DFS, let's focus on pre-order traversal only for now. If we use the same exact tree as before, 
DFS and pre-order traversal would visit nodes in this order. A, B, D, E, H, I, C, F, G, J. In terms of implementation, it usually involves a stack or recursion. If you're using a stack, you add the root node to a stack, then you pop the top item, process it, and then add its right and left children to the stack. You repeat, then we keep repeating step two until the stack is empty. In a coding environment, you typically have a class for your tree with methods to perform DFS. You'll utilize a stack or a recursion helper method that processes each node and traverses to its children. Now the key question is, when do we use BFS versus DFS? Use BFS if you're looking for the shortest path in an unweighted graph or if the solution is near the root. However, go for DFS if your tree is deep and wide as it's more space efficient. Let's talk about time complexities. The time complexity for tree traversal, both DFS and BFS, is O of n, where n is the number of nodes in the tree. This is because each node is visited only once. In terms of insertion and deletion, for general trees, the time complexity can vary depending on the tree structure, but it's also generally O of n in the worst case, as finding the right node can require traversing the entire tree. For search, the time complexity for searching a node in a tree is also O of n in the worst case, as it may require traversing the entire tree as well. Now, where are trees found in programming? Trees are used in so many applications in computer science that it's hard to cover. But a few things that might stand out. First off, the DOM, Document Object Model, in web development. HTML elements form a tree structure in the DOM. There's a hierarchy of nodes in HTML. Also, in file systems and operating systems, directories and files form a hierarchy. Finally, trees are used in databases for efficient data retrieval. Let's take a final look at a very simple implementation of a general tree in Python. Here you have our tree node class, which is initialized with a piece of data and an array for children. You can see our add child method takes a parent node and then just appends it to the children array. Here we new it up and then we add two children. And then when we print the tree, we'll see that we have the tree that we desire. Understanding trees and their various operations is crucial for any programmer. They form the basis of many complex data structures and algorithms and you want to practice implementing different types of trees and their traversals so you can strengthen your understanding.